Happy Friday, my friend. It's Pat Sloan here, and it is so nice to start the day with a little quilt chat, a little cup of coffee, and you, the wonderful people who come and hang out with me here at my YouTube channel. So what do we have? On the calendar today is a UFO challenge, another, the second one for the month. And I really love this one because I am living this one, not just talking about it, I'm doing it. So your challenge is to find some UFO that you have, which is unfinished object, unfinished project, whether it's just some parts um, that you started and you never got very far. It could be something almost completed. It could be a quilt top that has been sitting there. Uh, and I'll even go so far as to say it could be a pile of fabric and a pattern that you haven't cut into, but has been sitting there a while. And the criteria for what you look for today is one that you're not feeling the love anymore. You're not feeling it. When you look at your like, oh, I'll put it off, I'll put it off. Do I even want to finish that? What is that? I don't even know about that anymore. Um, I'm not in love with the colors. I'm not in love with the pattern. I don't want to spend what little time I have available to sew working on this pattern uh, or this project. So that is the type that you're looking for. And I'm going to show you mine because it has to do with the bats and boo border. So first of all, the border is on and I am absolutely thrilled, thrilled beyond belief. I just love it so much. I'm happy that I was able to use those half square triangles, which are four inch finished half square triangles. <clears throat> and they, I, what I did is I pulled out most of the orange. So it's pretty much black and white and I'm not going to do any more. I thought about it for, you know, a brief moment or two of making it more of a medallion, like I could keep expanding it out, but it's like, no, I have other projects I want to work on. This one I want to be done because I'd like to enjoy it this fall. I won't be able to work on it and enjoy it if I don't get it off to the spa to be quilted. So I also looked at binding. I've got these two ginghams the orange and the black and the white and uh, the black and white is nice but there's lots and lots of black and white in this so you know what I'm doing right I'm gonna go for the orange as binding you know so that's just going to be binding it will not be another border I thought about another border but I really don't think that it enhances it that much uh, so it'll be just for binding I might I might audition maybe a one inch border around finished and then the binding would go over it so it'd be sort of chunky, this sort of chunky orange around when it's finished. So that is, that is kind of where my thoughts are on that. But pretty much this one is completed. Um, bats and booze. <laughs> I really, I really, really like it. I am so, I'm so excited. It's like twice now I've been able to take two things and merge them together. But the problem is with those half square triangles is there's a lot more that I had <laughs> prepped to do a whole quilt, a zigzag quilt of white background with the half square triangles. So let's take a look in here. So I have the one that I showed you, which is basically a table runner. So I have the table runner, which has got, you know, a lot of those oranges and the black. And then I have a stack that are actually finished and ready to go, which now include a lot, whoops, a lot of orange. The stack is primarily all orange because I didn't use them. I didn't use them up there. Okay, then I have a smaller stack that have not been cut yet. So they're not cut. And then, and then, and then, I have a group of lights from the line. You know, this is like last year or the year before. I think it was a year before, yeah. And so those um, didn't get very far. With that, I had put some gray fabric and then some of the other Halloween fabrics here, which are used in the, in the quilt. So I might just pull a couple of these out of these Halloween pieces or not. Like I kind of like the one with the words, but other than that, I might just let the whole bunch of them go with the grouping or oh, the kitties. I like the kitties <laughs> and the pumpkins. Okay. All right. So the, there's that. This will go back into my gray stash. And then I also had done a few miscellaneous blocks. So these blocks will go into the bin here. There we go, into that bin where I have all 
of the bags by sort of topic of miscellaneous blocks. So those will go up there. There's how many? There's one, how many did it make? One, two, three, four. There's four of them. So actually I could sew the four of them together and make like a table mat. That would be super cute. Or I could make four of them together into a, a very sort of narrow table runner or do a border on it. And this grouping, this grouping is going to get bundled up, put into a baggie, to a Ziploc, and it will go to a friend to finish. So they will get this and they can finish it up however they like. If they want to make a couple of table runners, because there's enough there, they could just make another table runner and have two table runners and give one away, keep one for themselves. Um, they could work on making it a bigger, um, you know. But that is the challenge and I did it, I did it. That one's just gotta put those things away when we're done here and that is done. Okay, another finish. I haven't had a lot of finishes, as you've noticed, because I've not gotten binding on things, but I did get it on the Basket of Blooms. Uh, I did get the binding on last night. I was a bit tired, but I did it anyways. I did blanket stitch by machine, which is how I do most of my binding. And if you want to see the back, there is, whoops, there's the back, the blanket stitch. So I did a, if I don't say so myself, I did a nice job. <laughs> So this guy, all I have to do is stitch the hanger here by hand, and then it will go on my wall so I can enjoy this. I think I'm going to hang it in the kitchen. I think that's where it's going to go. Alrighty. I also finished and got the binding on the one charm pack, and I want to show you where I took a picture. So here is a picture of the quilt. I tongue it out with my... Uh, pink hydrangea, well they're not really pink, they're white and then they sort of, as they the blooms fade, they turn to pink and a soft kind of dusty um, mauve pink. I thought they were going to be pink, but they start out white and I needed to find the name of it. But there's the one, uh, the one charm pack book quilt all done. And if you go to my website down below in the link, you'll find all of the, you know, if you want to make something from the one charm pack book, I've got the list of that down there. Uh, so, and while you're there, subscribe. Thank you, thank you. Okay, what else? Ah, let's, let me give you a little update on what I'm doing with the, my cross stitch. Because as you know, I'm trying to really stay on top of things. Am I staying on top of them? Not bad, not bad. Ah, my chair's trying to roll away from underneath me. Okay, so I have the two that I'm basically working on. Let me show you, this is the monthly one, and I'm not doing too badly. I have to finish the saying on the bottom, and then the little, um, you know, stardust, I like to call it. <laughs> this little stardust that runs all along the top. Uh, here, I'll show you the whole thing. So, like, all along the top of this has this really cute border with all this little, you know, tiny little things going on. So that one, I just need to today finish it up. I've noticed that I've kind of slowed down on stitching, cross stitching every day. I was for a while, I had it out here in the studio, like on the table, and I would do it every, you know, like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, you know, total for the day. But I haven't been doing that. So I gotta switch that up. Now I did do a little bit on the, um, let me see there, on the sailboat. I put the bow over here and then I decided I was gonna go ahead and do the chain, even though I got a little wonky bit over here, I'm just gonna ignore that because I, you know, I'm not picking all that out, I've just decided. So I'm going to do the chain down there. So those things are moving along so that I can do Cross Stitch University, which starts on Monday. So we, it'll be, I need to be more committed to my amount of time. I know I won't keep up, you know, because I'm doing a book and that's gonna take time as well. So. I figure I need to get it out and lay it out again on the counter over there so that I can just stand there and do, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, which is what I was doing, which sounds really weird, but it works for me. The pillow top, the big stitching is almost done. I have a bunch of the black to do and the little bit of blue over here. So, and a bunch of the black. Uh, in the back, here's the back if you wanted to see. I chose to not put a fabric behind here because it's going to just be a pillow that's decorative 
and I decided to do it this way. Is that the right way? I don't know. I probably wouldn't recommend it because it's, you know, it could get roughed up if you were using a pillow, but because I know this is a very tiny little pillow that's only decorative, uh, I decided to do that. So it gives me one less layer I have to needle through, which is why I did it. So, you know, because I haven't big stitched in a while, or utility stitched, however you want to call it. All right, and one more thing I have that's uh, going on as I got, well, I got two actually. Got this one where I'm trying to use up those uh, little pieces. So this one is almost to size. And then I will have very few little pieces to use up, which is good because I know I'm gonna be creating more very soon. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you is I got in Christopher's, my friend Christopher Tom Thomas, his wonderful Halloween, wonderful, wonderful Christmas. <laughs> Christopher's Christmas, there you go, his Christmas fabric. And I wanted to show it to you because it's called Holly, Holly Holidays. And it has a huge big print. Now the big print does not get cut up into the charm pack. So the charm pack does not have this print, but I want to show it to you because it is gorgeous. It comes in red background, a white background, and a black background. So that is his main print. And then uh, the charm pack is so cute. And I'm thinking, I really want to do uh, like, you know, an Oh My Stars with it. So I did get two of the charm packs so that just in case it happens. Oh, here we go. So the holidays, he's got, and you can see it from the link down below. He's got black in there and they're all small images. So just some texture, some little Christmas trees, text print. There's snowflakes, and there's a lot of repeat prints. Then they have it in pink. So I like that pop of pink really on the trees. That's so darling. Uh, and then this gorgeous, oh, then they've got the Santas, which you can see here on the front. You've got the Santas, Santas on some of the other colors, some more word text on red. So that's the repeat. Those are all the text. So there's the print, you know, got that green. And I did get the green because doing the Oh My Stars, I want to use the dark green for the stars. So who knows? I might I might pop pop that charm pack open and play around with it on the wall just to take a break if I've got space between other things and just take a break and play around with it a little bit. All right, my friend, it's Friday and you are going to find that UFO that UFO, whoops, <laughs> that you can move on somehow hopefully one that you have been thinking you're not going to really do and you can decide not to do it take all the fabric put it back in your stash take whatever part it is that is done and sew it up or give it away or sell it okay i'm pat sloan i love you i love you Mwah. see you online